Welcome to part two of our Grasshopper Adventures Taiwan Cycle Tour. Alright, let's go. We left off in Rui Sui at the Butterfly Valley Resort. With our rest day done, we hit the road. The wet roads. We headed down from the resort through town, and through little farms and little towns all in the rain. Well, there's no way around it. It's properly raining now. Not hard, but uh, it's gonna be a wet day. Hello, dear viewers. Um, forgive the lack of footage from the morning. It's been a little damp, um, but I just thought I'd take a moment. Like, this is what we've been looking at all morning. Um, kind of cool misted fields, um, but it's been pretty damp. Um, and I thought, oh, like the rain has stopped a little bit. I'm drying out maybe. And then I, I looked, uh, looked down. Cats, cats about the same. We're dirty. <laughs> so <laughs> we're, we're a little crunchy, but uh, it's though damp, um, still nice views. So yeah, adversity aside, I think we're doing pretty good. We're, how far did you say in? 30 so yeah, we're, we're about 30 kilometers in. Let's round it up to half the ride. Next stop is lunch. Back on the road. We've come about two kilometers since our last beautiful misty mountain view. Um, but those two kilometers had like a millimeter of standing water on the edge of the road. So this is where we're at now. Hopefully the hotel has a hose because bikes are in a similar state. But we're still moving. Yep. We weren't exactly stopping for the scenery, so we got to lunch fairly early. We're at something called Bat Bang Yun Ji Dumplings for lunch. And it has really everything we need right now, which is a uh, street side service because uh, we're not really in the place to go into a restaurant right now. <laughs> we're dirty. <laughs> but we can stand here and, uh, and eat. We're quite dirty. How long do you think my socks are? Gray? Black? Nope, they're white. We knew our next hotel was a little remote, so after stopping for snacks in town, we got back on the road. As I sit here at this red light, here's the problem. We don't have that many kilometers left in the day, but on an elevation map of the ride, here's where we are. And here's what's ahead of us. So, see you on the hill. But before we got to the climb, we encountered a little more adversity. So we have had our first casualty, which is my rear uh, wheel. <laughs> I got a flat tire. Um, and Greg is now changing the tire. Yes. On the muddiest and dirtiest day possible. <laughs> we don't know that. Two days from now could be worse. Could be. The guy whose front step we were using as a workshop was friendly enough. He and his buddies had many useful suggestions that we couldn't understand, including, we think, hey, put your bikes in the back of my truck and I'll take you somewhere better. We didn't know where better was, so we finished the tire change, took some pictures with our new friends, and moved on. Look at that tire. Look at it go. We finished the flat portion of the ride and lunch and the repairing the puncture tube portion of the ride. Now we're going over that and we have to the climb. In retrospect, we'd really built this climb up too much in our heads. 
In the end, it was maybe three quarters of Burnaby Mountain, a ride that we would do on a normal Saturday at home. This is, this is definitely one of those moments where I have to remind myself to look because it's really pretty, but also it's up there. We're not actually crossing that peak. There's a tunnel. Here's a tip for those cycling in Taiwan. When you see a switchbacks, you think that's gonna be a steep hill. Now, it's when you see the straight road where they couldn't be arsed to make the switchback. That's steep. Eventually, we made it to the tunnel, which marked the peak of the climb and was the only dry road we'd see all day. Of course, the descent was a lot quicker, even though we were being cautious on the wet roads. From there, it was just a few more kilometers to the hotel, which did have a much needed hose. I didn't get any video of our state on arrival, but this is what the bikes look like. We were about the same. After a shower, the tone of our day changed considerably. The tour had made us dinner reservations at a place called Moon Sun Restaurant. We are, in fact, we are savoring life. Which was possibly one of the most surprising meals of my life. The whole restaurant seems to be this one dude who is the waiter and busboy, but also self-taught chef, doing an amazing set tasting menu for about $50 Canadian. During the meal, he kept on being unable to explain in English the local herbs he was using in the dish. So he would run outside, pick a leaf and bring it in so we could smell it and understand properly what we were eating. I don't know what he's doing out there in the middle of nowhere with a fine dining set menu, but good for him. If you happen to be on the east coast of Taiwan, stop by Moon Sun Restaurant. The next day was a rest day. We walked through the Wushubi Fishing Harbor. Had a second coffee at a cafe with the best view ever. We had beef noodle soup for lunch and a seafood dinner. But mostly we sat back and waited for our clothes to dry from the day before. There's maybe uh, three or four things that I can reliably order in Mandarin. Um, beef noodle soup is among them, uh, coffee, and beer. Um, the, the, this is the vocabulary that I have retained from my Mandarin course in 2012 and my time in China in 2013. Beef noodle, coffee, beer. And large and small. And all, all of those have happened today, so coming in clutch. Day four or four. Last we, day on the bike. We've got a little bit of uh, mud that, that uh, survived the hosing off process. Um, cats, uh, well, let's just hope Cat doesn't need her medical card because it's full of mud and or dirt, depending how dry it's gotten. But we're ready to go. Yeah. Tai Dong. We headed south along Highway 11, which is pretty much the road along the coast. It was a holiday weekend, so as we got towards some of the tourist attractions, things got a little busy. Then... Well... We've encountered further adversity. Cat's uh, punctured the rear again. Uh, well, second time's a charm. So I spent some more time in the side of the road changing a tube. At least it was dry this time. And back on the road. As it happened, we were almost at the cafe that's owned by Simon and Todd, the proprietors of Grasshopper Taiwan, which was our tour company. So we met Simon. Our guide Kenji came by and gave Kat's tire a good look over, and we headed on again. Well, I've stopped because uh, the GoPro is not getting the scenery because the scenery is over there. Um, we're sort of running along this ridge of mountains the whole way. Um, there is apparently an unusual amount of traffic out here today. It's a holiday, 
So over the engine noise, <laughs> this is our view off to the side as we're mostly looking at traffic down the GoPro. So we'll, uh, we'll see what you get in the video, but it's pretty from where we are. We stopped at the Xiaoye Liu rock formations and had a good look around there. As we came into Taidung, our cycling adventure started to come to a close. Kenji met us at the hotel as we arrived. And for a final time, we had the experience of coming in off the road all sweaty and nasty, but having enthusiastic hotel staff fuss around and try to carry our stuff as if we couldn't. Kat and I both recorded our entire ride into the city. I'll post an extended cut of that. If you're subscribed, I'm sure you'll see it come by. The Taidong Night Market was right outside the hotel, so we finished our day walking around there and said goodbye to our cycling adventure. We have a few more days left in Taiwan, Get subscribed, I'll post that video soon.